Hi, I'm Andre Cano, and I've been here in Holland for 30 years, and I come from the Detroit area, and um, I love books, and I love libraries, and I love telling stories. You might say, well, why do you, and people often say, you're such a detailed person, your stories are wonderful, but you go into a lot of detail. And not that they don't like the, the detail, because I think detail adds to the telling of the story. But let me tell you about how I came to be the way I am in terms of enjoying and, and telling stories. Um, from a very early age, I started going to the library and I just, and at the same time, I was learning to read. And what I learned was those 26 letters that make up your whole life. It gives you life and it reflects what you're, uh, about the community, about culture. It gives you everything, absolutely everything. And the library contains those letters repeated over and over and over and over again in millions of combinations and, and many, many arrangements. And that's why I love stories. Now, as a result of that, I became a communicator. I mean, we're all communicators, but professionally, I became a writer and um, telling a lot of different stories from, from newspaper reporting to writing advertising to doing public relations. But it's all about communication, and that's what the library is about. Um, when I moved to Holland, Michigan, with my husband, my husband had accepted a job, and I had left a job in Detroit, and uh, this was 30 years ago, and I was um, looking for, for another job. Neither my husband nor I have children, uh, so all my adult life, I've worked, worked outside of the home, I'll say. Uh, and so I, uh, until I found a full-time job, I was doing freelance writing at, for a couple of newspapers and magazines and some, some clients. And I found that my previous jobs had always provided me with the secretary to handle the everyday tasks. Uh, you know, like making copies, looking up facts, setting up meetings, um, doing uh, all the myriad number of things that secretaries do. Now I didn't have one. You know, who's going to take the mail to the mail, to the post office, et cetera, et cetera. And I needed to find a way to, to do that myself. And what I found was the Herrick Library. It had everything. There were computers, there were reference materials, phones, meeting rooms, copy machines, printers, even a bathroom. I called it my office in town. We were living out by the, uh, by the lake, and every day I would tell my husband, I'm going into my office in town, the Herrick Library. Since then, 30 years later, you know, I did find work in a number of places, uh, retired, and I'm back to the library, finding and using more services than I ever had before. It's not just about books anymore or about office space. It's about classes. And the, the best thing of all is you'll probably not like my my encouraging this, but they have an IT person. Having been used, used to a secretary before and then getting used to an IT department, doing it on your own was, I was lost. And the library has IT technical help and classes to teach you how to do it. And they, they have more books than you can borrow. They've got books online. They've got books um, on, on every single to topic. Then I found that they have this 
this department called Groundworks. It's a room downstairs that was, it had a lot of print graphic design on the front of it and these big letters saying Groundworks. And I thought, because they had lost their coffee shop. And I thought, oh, they've got a coffee shop again. And what a great name, Groundworks. <laughs> but it wasn't about coffee. It was about how you could transfer slides, negatives, how you could do use 3D printers, how you could use, they have scanners, they have sewing machines, anything that you want to know about telescopes. How, uh, and they'll show you how to use it. And uh, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. It's a place to do everything besides just telling stories or reading stories. Um, I believe that libraries really, really are critical, essential to every community. And the history of, I hadn't thought that much about libraries until I, I read a book about the Los Angeles library that had uh, burned down and the terrible loss and, and the period of recovery that it took for them and how how devastating it was. And then I began to really think more about libraries. And I would say that libraries are always beautiful places, uh, buildings. Uh, they may be small, and maybe even in a, a mobile unit, but they're beautiful because when you walk inside, at first, you might, as a child, you might be a little intimidated, but at the same time, there's so much you can do. So, so much information that's available to you. And as you get older and um, more advanced in your reading, you realize that you this is all free, which is incredible, and that you can choose it yourself. I had, when I was in elementary school, I had the school librarian was Ms. Schlock, I remember her name, and she would let me read the National Geographic magazines. And it wasn't that they were off limits, but it seemed like children weren't supposed to look at, or that they might have different purposes for looking at National Geographic magazines. But I was interested in everything in the National Geographic magazine. And Ms. Schlock would let me and encourage me to, and every time a new issue came in, she'd let me know it was there, and I would read the National, read it and look at the pictures. And as a result of that, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've ended up visiting 49 of the 50 states, all but three of the Canadian provinces, 50 plus countries. Uh, I just love geography and love visiting countries and different people in the diversity of the countries. Ms. Schlock, later it turned out, I, my sister who was 15 years younger than I was, and we had moved, and uh, Ms. Schlock became the, the librarian for my sister. And it turned out that Ms. Schlock lived in the same neighborhood then that we lived in. And so we became friends as adults and she retired and was a volunteer at the Art Institute. And we would get together and for lunch. And she was, at that time, please forgive me, Ms. Schlock, but she, she was what people would consider kind of the old maid librarian or old maid teacher. And she didn't have children. And she was never married. And I, never had children and we would have lunch and she would give me advice on what it was like to be an aunt and how much you can give. And uh, so I was still learning and she was still sharing her stories and her life experiences with me uh, for many years. And um, it shows you the, the kind of person that librarians, it's about sharing. And uh, I have to tell you one Christmas holiday, my husband and I bought tickets to a wassail dinner at the Detroit Institute of Arts. And we were seated, this was a random thing, and we were seated, there were tables of eight, and 
there was my husband and I, and the other six people were librarians. Six librarians, myself and my husband, and we thought this is going to be the most boring evening of, of our lives. Well, it was the best time that we've had at an adult party. <laughs> librarians are wonderful. They're conversational. They know so much. They're resourceful. They're always helping, always laughing. And I always since then have believed that if you get choose your partner in a trivial pursuit game, you want a librarian on your team. Um, there, there's so many, many stories of uh, about libraries. Um, a number of years ago, I was in in Beijing, and it was a Sunday morning, about 9 a.m., and I passed this building that people were lined up for three blocks waiting for the library. It was the library waiting for the library to open. And I thought, you know, the, the libraries serve such a purpose. As I was thinking about doing this uh, or telling the stories, I thought about uh, how much I, I still use the library. After I retired, I started taking classes uh, online uh, from Oxford University. And one of the things that was so, I always wanted to attend Oxford University, but uh, had to do it online. And one of the things I found was that going, going to the university, I had access to all of the Oxford libraries and all of their accesses. And it was just wonderful, wonderful. And as a result of that, yeah, I studied architecture, which I had not done uh, through my adult life and professional life. And I started now doing teaching or giving classes on architecture throughout the world. And recently I was doing, I'm preparing a, a second class on architectural icons of Detroit. And one of the places that I feature is the Detroit Public Library, which is one of the most beautiful buildings there is. And it got me thinking about how I used to go into the library there. And just, it was a place where you dropped off books, you got more books, and you just walked on through. And never paying attention to the awesomeness of the architecture of those of that building. And many, many libraries are like that, just like the Herrick Library. I love modern architecture. And when they redesigned it, it was so exciting to see all the lighting and the glass. Um, although I later did become aware of some some of the issues that they have. But and I don't know if you if you've ever looked at, but if when you come from the parking lot and if you look down they have one of the most beautiful gardens that that uh, an office complex has. Uh, they've got these hydrangeas uh, that their offices get to look out on, and you don't see it from the parking lot. But sometime if in the spring, look down there, and you're in for a real treat. When I was doing the research recently about the Detroit Public Library, I remembered that when I was in high school, I was invited to a friend's pajama party during uh, the Christmas holidays. And her, uh, when I went and her mother had given her um, an album, a music album that was uh, Tchaikovsky, it was Van Cliburn playing Tchaikovsky's concerto, piano concerto. And while most of the people, the, the girls at the party were gossiping and trying on makeup, I asked, I was shy and I asked if I could play this album. And I played it and fell in love with Tchaikovsky. Subsequently got the album and am familiar with everything uh, that Tchaikovsky has, has composed. And I was thinking about that the other day and how libraries keep, they're like gifts that keep giving. 
And I thought about this friend who, that was many, many years ago that I lost track of. Uh, but I remembered that her mother was the head of the Detroit Public Library and that she was so lucky to have, I mean, I was lucky to have my mom, but she was lucky because her mother was the head of the Detroit Public Library and its whole system. And subsequently, later on, she became uh, the president of the American Library Association. And it was like she could have any book she wanted. But the reality is anybody can have any book. And they can, um, you, you don't have to have your mother bring you the book. You can access all of that. Records, as I say, everything. It's also interesting about libraries that as I've moved around, and you can, you can get some sense of what a community is like by their collections. I remember when I lived in Detroit and moved to the, one of the Detroit suburbs, it was, they had one of the largest collections of books on single parenting, on divorce, handling divorce, you know, how to, how to deal with divorce. And, and I thought, wow, that's really, because this is a community that, that has a lot of uh, single parent homes. When we moved to Gross Point, and I went to their library, they had one of the largest collections of gardening books and cookbooks. And they were very conservative, but they were into gardening. And that was really interesting. And then when I came to Holland, and I had never ever thought about libraries having genealogy collections. And I think, not that I've compared it to other libraries, but I think that the Herrick Library may have a lot of a, a large collection of genealogy materials. So um, I, I could go on and on with stories, but I think what I want to emphasize is that libraries get, teach you uh, to observe, to, to reach out, and, and they, it provides you with, with so many life learning skills. And when I was walking in today to do this recording, I thought, I, uh, as I was parking, there were these two little kids that were standing outside the door no coats on, and it was cold. And I wondered, they were both bef below five years of age. See, I tell you, I'm into a lot of detail. And I thought, where's their parent? And then I saw this woman carrying a, a baby in a car seat and some tote bags full of library books. And they were coming to spend the morning at the library. And I thought, I wonder how many stories they'll learn because they, as they enter those doors each time, they, they're exposed to so many, many stories. And it's, you can't find a gift as, as wonderful as the sharing of stories, the sharing of life experiences. And that's what the library is about. And that's what I wanted to do with my story.